Let us start from the beginning. From Genesis chapter 1. We are starting from the beginning. To prove that God is good. And God is love. Uh, verse 1 of Genesis. Uh, chapter 1 verse 1. We want to show that God is good and God is love. In verse 1 it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And verse 3, And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. Now verse 4, God saw that the light was okay and he separated the light from the darkness okay so what did God uh, 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 what did God see after the the creation of the light that it was so creation was Okay, verse 10. In verse 10 it says, God called the dry ground land and the gathered waters he called the seas. And then God saw that it was okay, we are taking it from the beginning to show you that God is indeed good. This is during the time of creation. And what was God doing? He was doing good. Nothing else. Huh? And I would dear Good Bootsy. So verse ten says God saw that it was Mudimu Alemoha Wabona Fakole Malemo. Verse twelve. Let's read verse twelve together. It says in verse 12, the land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. Why did God make uh, trees that had seeds in them? So that we can find them today. Well, uh, when was creation? When, what do you think? We can safely say creation was more than 6,000 years ago, right? More than, than maybe 10,000 years ago, or some say millions of years ago. We don't know. Okay? But it's a long time ago. So, at the beginning, God did not just make fruits, He made seed bearing. So, no matter how long ago the creation was, there was a watermelon with seeds inside. That is why we have it today. Because the seed made sure that we will find the watermelon today. What kind of a God is this? Huh? What he, I mean, he, he, he doesn't just make trees with fruits. He makes trees with seed-bearing fruits. He makes a plan for generations to come. And he makes sure he preserves them. Hmm? Okay? Seed bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their various kinds. And it was so. Okay? 
The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruits with seed in it according to their kinds. And God saw that it was. Is he a good God? Does he do good things? God again and again we see this thing. God saw that it was good. Can you deny that he's a good God? No ways. There's no way you can deny that he's a good God. Uh, did we read verse 17? Okay. Then we can go to verse 17. Uh, we are still in at the beginning. Chapter 1. Verse 17. Verse 17 says, God set them in the finam fima meant of the heavens to give light on the earth. He's talking about the stars that he made. Okay. The moon, the moon, you, know, you know all of those things. To give light on the earth. Verse 18, and to rule over the day and over the night. And to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was Amen. So when God was doing all of this, the stars, the moon, the sun, everything, to govern the day and the night, at the end, he saw that it was good. Verse 21. So God created great sea creatures. Those things are scary. They are very huge. Imagine le, 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 um, Imagine the, the fish that swallowed John. How can you get swallowed huh? by uh, a fish and you can just by repent in the belly? Huh? Just imagine. Uh, so they are So he created the great creatures of the sea, every living thing that moves. Uh, with which the waters are bounded according to their kind and every winged bed according to its kind. Have you ever seen those beds? Yes. But the white the are for us. What are they looking at? Ah, That's the bed. <laughs> They don't have such. But if you can take time and look at them, you'd be amazed on, on how they look. They are big. They are skull. You'll see all kinds of heads. You see, God. <laughs> Was really making variety. Mm -hmm. Verse 25. We are seeing this again. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, 24 says, Then God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature according to its kind. Cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth. Each according to its kind. And it was so. In verse 25, and God made the beast of the earth according to its kind. Cattle according to their kind. And everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. And God saw that it was. Do you see, even from the beginning, uh, at creation, what you see when you look at creation is the goodness of God. Everything that he did. Again and again, we see that he said, 
it is good as he was creating he was creating something that is good he saw that it was good he rejoiced at what he did because it was good can you deny that he is a good god is god a good god does creation represent his goodness? Amen? So he did all of these things and he saw that it was good. Okay, verse 31. Verse 31. It says, God saw all that he had made okay after god did everything all of those things that we have read about he saw that it was what does the bible say after saying this is good that is good this is good and then when he looked at everything that he had created what was his final uh, saying it was very good. Are go mole mo thata. Ene o etsa tse di botjefela. He does all good things. Amen. He is a good God. Ke modimo se ameng. And he creates what is good. Mo dira se se ameng. Everything that he originally intended. Sa se eleditseng go simologo. Was that it will be good for us. Ke ro gone mole mo mo rona. And the Bible says. Bibeler. Evening came and then morning the sixth day so creation in general is good now what we are seeing here in genesis chapter one it's like the big picture have you watched the gods must be crazy because it must be crazy. Uh, at the beginning, it shows the map of Africa, right? Then it zooms down, goes down, down to Botswana, and then we start seeing the details. So in Genesis 1, we see God giving us the big picture. He shows us with a wide lens what is happening over creation now in chapter 2 he zooms down so that we can see what he is doing psalms 139 psalms 139 we see that god is intimately involved in your life in my life he is right there he's not just a god who is you know Concerned about the big picture. He's a God who goes down to the details of your life. And he begins to show you how good he is to you. We have proved that he was good in creation. Now, how do we see him now uh, in us? As he gets intimately involved, the Bible says, "Does the heavens and the earth, does uh, the heavens and the earth, and all the host of them were finished?" Chapter two. Chapter two. Uh, from verse one. It says the heavens and the earth and all of it was finished. Okay. But the seventh day, God had finished the work He had been doing so on the seventh day he rested from all his work okay now verse 4 this is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created now if you are a, a, somebody who reads the word you'll ask yourself can didn't we just talk about creation now remember what i said the big picture the wide picture and then the detail so, no god takes us to the detail of what he was doing he's going over it but now in detail when the lord god made the earth and the heavens now the 
Now no shrub had yet appeared on the earth and no plant had yet sprung up. For the Lord God had not sent rain on the earth and there was no one to work the ground. But streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. So we see that God was involved in the creation of the whole world, of all of creation. In his love, we see the big picture. And then we zoom now to what he does now on the earth. We find that God is intimately involved in the creation of man. All the other things that he was doing, he was saying let there be let there be let there be this let there be that but when it came to you what did he do God got dirty sure imagine everything else he was saying just speaking the way but when it got to you God had to get dirty if you imagine God wearing white clothes, isn't it? Isn't isn't start a kit here resurrection? I bear white white, white coat. Imagine God pulling it back, huh? Pulling it back. I wish it's a hammer. Huh? And going down to the ground. Huh? To spit on the ground to make mud. And then he starts shaping you. Shaping a man. Huh? When we were growing up, we used to play with uh, clay. And you could build a whole marak. And, uh, and then there will be a, a father there and a mother there. Mud houses. Make a crawl. Huh? Just with clay. Where did we get this from? Him. The first time somebody played with soil, it was God. And he used this soil, the one we have here. On earth. Because he knew that we were going to need this soil to survive here on earth. He decided that I'm going to use the same ingredient in making them that is in on the earth that they are going to live from. Because I want them to eat this earth. Do you know that we eat from the earth? Because we are made with earth, we eat from the earth. The vegetables that you eat, where do you grow them? Hmm? The pap that you, you eat, where, where does it grow from? Everything that is that you eat is from the soil that you have made with. Actually, I saw some articles some time back last month proving that the ingredients that are in a human body actually are found on the earth. The meat that you eat, for it to become meat, it eats the grass that grows on the ground. Again, that is why these GMOs are dangerous because they are feeding things with chemicals that may be different from the earth that we come from. But God knew that we were going to survive through the earth, so He made us from the earth. He got dirty for us. He became intimately, He was shaping Adam's nose. Ears. Mm -hmm. Making sure that he shapes the ears so that they can get the sound. 
your nose so that you can smell food close your tongue. have you ever tried to eat food when your nose is blocked and the taste because the smell of the food and your tongue how you taste them they, there is some connection there God brought them together Make sure he, he puts your eyes right here where you need them. He was intimately involved in making you. He got dirty. After he made you the way he liked you, and you were, you were not a living being, God did something that angels had never ever seen. He went down on his knees and he did CP, CP, CPR. He did CPR. And I can imagine him pressing the chest of Adam. <laughs> and the Bible says, man became a living being. What intimacy. Mm. I think the angels were in awe. <laughs> because, you know, to God, I mean, to, to the angels, God is the master. What is the master doing? That is mad. How can he, how can he do this to man? How can he Gentle. went down intimately? Do you kiss anyone? Okay, in the Eastern, they kiss, 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 kiss. Even in the mouth. In Botswana, we don't. And then there's another kiss that goes beyond. The, CP, the CPR kiss. It's very intimate. It's not for everyone. So you can imagine the shock that angels had when they saw God opening the mouth of mud. You know, God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They had a conference. And they said, let us make men in our own I, image. I don't know whether angels were there. Standing there, listening, guarding. But I think they were because word came out somehow to Lucifer and he didn't like this idea that's how he decided that it's better he topples God for him to serve mad a lesser being according to him a lesser being made from soil frail, fragile limited but anyway, they met and they decided to make men. So angels were watching and wondering. Amen. Words. You have the breath of life. The fact that you are alive, you have the breath of God in you. You are breathing because God gave you his breath. Angels look at you and they wonder, does this person know that they are breathing God? The original breath that God gave to Adam is the same breath we are breathing today because we are from him. Your breathing proves the love of God. So he went down very intimately and started breathing on us. In Psalms 139, maybe we, the psalmist can give us a clearer picture of what, what was happening here. Because this thing is, is very deep. Humans, we don't get it. We don't get it. That's why we're doing some of the things we are doing. Listen to what David says in Psalm 139, from verse 1. He says, you searched, you searched me, Lord, and you know me. 
You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. Do, do you know that you are known that much? Do you know that you are known that way? You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all of my ways. Now, when you love somebody, you want to find out what's going on in their lives. You are always checking on them. Are you okay? Well, now, are you I good? I me, I in the morning, did you sleep well? Or Do you have any pains? I I get you, you, you want to know what's going on because you love them. Now, God's love makes him to be concerned about every little detail of your life. He says in verse 4, before a word is in my mouth or in my tongue, you Lord, you know it completely. You have me in behind and before and you lay your hand upon me. Wow. This is God who loves you. He says, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. For me to know that I'm loved this much, I'm taken care of this much, it's too wonderful. Wonder. It makes me wonder. What kind of love is this? He says, it's too lofty, lofty for me to attain. And then in verse 7 he says, the psalmist, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I bake my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. God's love follows you wherever you are. Because he wants you to be safe. He says, your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me. Even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day. For darkness is as light to you. Now listen to this now. Verse 13. Verse 13. We are zooming in. We are going deeper. Huh? We are zooming in now. He says in verse 13. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I make you go Can I go Uh huh. You knit me together. What a car Unrukile. Unrukile. You knit me together. Huh? You knit me together. God was intimately involved in your making. You know how a thread is like. You need to put it through that. Again, then you have to uh, neatly knit it. How can I tell you? If you can be careful, you see that uh, where, you, where, you, where you are neat, especially there is that line over there. There is that line. 
check it out. You need me together in my mother's womb. On tukile You check check later. You need me together in my mother's womb. God was intimately involved <inaudible> in making you. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. When God was making you, he was very careful. He was very deliberate. He was handling you with care. You are fragile. He made sure that you are a wonderful. Uh, people look at you and wonder. You know, sometimes angels look at us and say, wow. God, the father was, was serious when he was making humans. Huh? Okay? And he says, your works are wonderful. Your works. I know that full well. Now listen to this. My frame was not hidden from you. That frame. Huh? How When you make bricks, you put your. My frame. It wasn't hidden from you. It was just hidden from the mother and the father. They didn't know how you look like. Hidden from. But to God, it was not hidden. Huh? It was not hidden from you. Listen to this. When I was made in the secret place, huh? God hides you when he's making you busy developing you. He already knows how you are going to look like when you are 40. Mm. Hey, he looks like your father. Huh? But you father is not allowed. Hey. Just comforting you <laughs> that he looks like you. While our frame was hidden from others, it was not hidden from God. Let me tell you, you are from a secret place. You are not a mistake. Your frame was never hidden from God. God. He knew you fully well. He He made made you the way He wants you to be. There There is no mistake in you. You You are not a mistake. You are made in the secret place. And He says, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. I mean, this one, woven together, it, it gives me a picture of a jersey that has been made with wool. Eh? With many colors. Eh? Green. Green. When it's done, you see, ah, hallelujah. This now looks good. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. You see, one of the reasons why God hates abortion so much. It's because he already sees a human being fully formed. When scientists are just seeing cells, multiplication of cells, God sees a fully formed. Because his eyes, they see that unformed body. To him it's not a pile of cells. He sees a human being who will come out of that. Now listen to this. Not only did he see your unformed body, he also saw all the days that are ordained for you. 
all the days that were ordained for me were written in your book malatsi o tlhake a betsweng a kwadile mo bukenyame ngwana a modimo o tshabelang leso why are you so much afraid of death we tiela nka go tshabala leso malatsi a ba kwadile mo bukenyame running around fearing death kwa go tshela le bakale le ka the days are numbered hmm la ba ka re ba 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 go tsosa mo baswi Even when they can try raise you from the dead. You just wake up and say no, it's time I'm going. Left that's behind. I just want to go. Forward I go. Agir. So we just don't need Mutu say ela we should wake up carefully Baba na ba tsana tsiki bo sa bona ba ba re nya ga re pate motho o ra bo we to they say ah uh, that one we don't want Go nna le metsa metsano they would be All the days ordained for me were written in your book Malatsi o tla a wa betsweng a kwadile Before one of them came to be eh pele ga o tle a nna teng So before you even started crying the first day but how simola go la hela the days were already written malatsi a kwadile god is in the past he's in the now he's in the future god knows exactly how i'm going to die when i'm going to die the day the time the second luen all of us so how to wara go wara go re ke tsa tsenye ke le ka tsile le tsile we tiela go tsila you are just delaying you are living before your day your first day came to be you already wrote how many days ago 135 yana go wara ka gone go mpeno e le dozi di sana di decide le before so da o tsaka ke go tlhela ka gone go setse go kwadi and he invest when he says how precious are your thoughts towards me o god me hopo le ga go emente jang mo gonna modim how vast is the sum of them intimity jang do you know that god thinks a million plus thoughts about you because when he made you he had a million things that he wanted to show so his, con- his thoughts towards you are just go baliti me his thoughts towards you are just like they are vast they see of thoughts towards you were i to count them hali tshonele ka bala they would outnumber the grains of sand eta heta di thaka tsa mmu when i awake i'm still with you ha ke tsoga ke na le wena now the bible doesn't exaggerate bible ga e o ke tse sepe it says in as they are e bua dilo ka ha dintseng ka teng the same says if i was to count the thoughts that you have towards me uh, um Mupesale mara ha le ka bala me gopolo yo. Have you ever been to the sea? Eta heta e di tsaka tsa mmu. O kile wa kwa le wa tleng. Have you seen? Kulo a bona hela. God starts. Me gopolo a modi. You are outnumber those saints. E heta those grains. And if you think about it just right now in today think about the thoughts that God has had about you today, okay, just one, one about your safety the fact that you, you come here safely to listen to the word you know the, the three accidents that the enemy wanted to destroy you today that he made sure his angels take out of your way his thoughts towards you are just vast when you wake up is there how to how thing if only you how are you god would slay the wicked away from me you who are blood thirsty and then he says they speak of you with evil intent so the psalmist here mupesalema uh, zooms down to the fact that god did not only create the whole universe the earth are mo dimo ga dira le bopohela creatures on earth eh di gaga bi mola hatse god zoomed into you ah tebaganya lo yana ele mo di god involved me a tsa ka rolo God also planted a garden for us. He did not say let there be 
a garden of Eden. Ha re a gonne le tsingwa. Do you know that God planted a garden? Mudimo a ilema. Have you ever tried to plant a garden? O kilwa le ka go le matsimwana. I'm not talking about uh, you know the backyard spinach and carrots i mean a proper garden with fruit trees god planted a garden for us hmm? what are the characteristics of a garden a proper garden it's very peaceful just imagine you go into this garden that has got beautiful fruit trees on one side flowers on the other side the soil is very rich remember they they did not dress then. Uh, they did not wear shoes imagine uh, Adam and Eve walking through the cool of the day in the garden that coolness under their feet and the, 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 the birds are making noise the butterflies are flying around with different colors it's almost like they are playing games they come and they sit here on Adam and on Eve you know it's just and as, as, as they are passing by, they see this they see nice, the juicy peach. Babona, uh, uh, it has water around it because it's so moist. They don't need to wash it. It's clean already. Adam pulls it and the water shakes <laughs> out of it. And then it goes, <laughs> you feel the sweetness and the sourness of it just exploding through your whole being and if he's there and say ah, and adam gives can you feel it the, 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 the garden the, the peace that is there the fruits, all kinds of fruits. Do you know that before the fall, fruits, food, was nicer than it is now. You think your watermelon is sweet? Before the fall, the watermelon was sweeter but healthy. How many of you have eaten dates? Dates. Dates. The first time I started eating dates was when I was in Israel, 2013. Huh? To be honest with you, I didn't know what I used to see them. <laughs> but in the promised land, I wanted to taste it. I've never tasted sugar like that that is <laughs> <natural>. <laughs> So sweet. So natural. <laughs> so before the fall, you know, the fall has affected even our taste buds and everything. Food was so much nicer, so much sweeter than it is now. Now. So God planted a, a, a garden which spoke of peace, of fruitfulness, of rest. In Botswana, unfortunately, we don't have the culture of like proper gardens. You know, you know that we don't have like botanical gardens, like proper gardens where you go there and garden even orchards because everything. of our, our semi-desert situation. Do you think that in the desert there are more spaces? We need like proper, proper gardens, you know. See more hella eating. It's a beautiful site. Uh, there's rest in there. And after he planted a garden for men, he put Adam there to work the garden. Work is good. God works. And God gave Adam work. He gave him responsibility. It's good to work. We'll talk more about that. Amen. Actually, God hates laziness. To be you see it again and again in the Bible. 
God doesn't give us miracle money. He blesses the work of our hands. Mudi mo kare he madi hala wa kolo kodi mo udi sawa hata tiro ari atata rona. God doesn't raise because he's a worker. He works. He doesn't raise uh, lazy children who just sit and expect everything to come to them. That is not our God. He doesn't spoil us like that. He wants us to work the ground. So he gave Adam to work the garden. So when we plant a garden as human beings, we we plant it for beauty, for peace, for juicy fruits. This is our God. That's what he did for us. Six hundred and thirty. God created Adam with a free will. Mudimu adir Adam mo anale bui ketel. Why? Because God wanted Adam to have the best. Mudimu na bata Adam mehan ne lecha matsodi ya. Free will is very important. It's very critical. Ketel abu bot koko abu mo na. Because you can't love without free will. Kahone hako kwa rata osana bui ketel. You can choose the best if you don't have free will. Hako kheta mohusi amin tata osana bui ketel. The minute there is force. Hako na le pati kia hoting. There is no true love. You cannot force somebody to love you. They have to want to do it. They have to exercise their free will towards that thing. And so God shows this very important uh, choice in the garden of Eden. He plants so many fruit trees, so many wonderful trees in Eden. And then there is a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. There is a tree of life. And God says to Adam and Eve, you, will, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge and of, of good and knowledge and evil. Of the knowledge of good and evil. God wanted us to decide for ourselves what is right or what is wrong. He wanted us to decide to do what is right according to his weight. Or to go against. The free will is very important. Because God wanted us to love him freely. So he had to provide a way that we could express our free love to him. By choosing to follow him. Because without free will, there is no love. He's, uh, he's, our father is not an evil father. He's a father who wants his children of danger. Do not eat of this fruit, because the day you eat of it, you shall die. That is how fathers, fathers are like that. They want children of something that is harmful to them. And God wants us to exercise our free will in the right way. And he didn't think it was okay for a man to be alone. Actually, the first time in creation that we see God saying it is not good. It was when he was talking about Adam's loneliness. He said it is not good for a man to be alone. I will make a helper. A helper. God wants us to help each other. In a suitable way. Amen. So he didn't want us to be alone. What does this prove about God? That relationships are central. They are very core to our makeup and to his purposes on earth. We are relational beings. Part of the image of God in us is that we are relational. Because he says, Arre. let us Arre. Arre. make man Arre. in our own image. Arre. When he said, let us, Arre. Arre. they were in a relationship. Arre. Arre. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit Arre. 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 agreeing Arre. together. Arre. That's why in a family situation, it's important that you Agree on this. It is part of the image of God. 
The devil will use division. Diabolo so ta dirisa khawana. In small things in big things. Because he knows when he divides you you cease to have the image of God that was already. So relationships are very core. And then in Genesis chapter 2 verse 23 he sets a pattern in place. For this reason a man will leave his father and mother and cling cleave to his wife. God has always wanted families to start you know here and there. When you are a grown man, and you are a grown woman, you say thank you my parents for growing me. Now it's time for me to go and have my family. And then they start their family. Families, families. Families grow, they move. We have clans, tribes. They grow, they move. We have nations. God has always wanted the family uh, uh, to, to, to come to a place where as you grow, out of your own family you have your own family because god wanted many children to come to and he wanted families to showcase his relationship with us and we see that god celebrates intimacy between a man and a woman this too is a good thing god designed us in a way that we can be together intimately because he wanted families to grow out of a loving relationship the way children are made they are made out of love very clear Uh, intimate love. Children are supposed to be a result of love. So because the making of children is out of love, making, they are supposed to grow in loving families where they can feel secure in a family that loves each other. Where they can feel a belonging in a family that loves each other. Where they can have a sense of identity in a family that loves each other. That was the original intention of God. And it's a good thing. Like I said, Work is good. God works. He's still working today. Jesus once said, "My father is always at work, and so I'm also at work." We need to work because we are made in His image. We are like Daddy. If Daddy works, we work. Amen. God wanted us to have the best. And what is the best? Who is the best? By far. It's him. He wanted us to have him. We know that all things will pass, but not love. And you cannot love without free will. If love is forced it's not love. At all. When we tell our children stay away from the road. Stop jumping from uh, the wheelbarrow. What are we trying to do? We are trying to protect them. They think we just don't want them to have fun. But they don't see the big picture. So if they keep on you know running onto the road. After some time you take them. They cry. My father is cruel. He doesn't want me to have fun. The father knows that if they keep on doing this. They'll end up being injured. Our father is like that. He's protecting us. Like Sometimes he does that to us so that we, we can come back to his safe love. Or a child wants to 
has a hot plate. Kana ngwana ba ta go tshwara e stofo se se molela. Oh a coal they they look at the that coal and it's red and they like to them it's a toy very nice. They they very nice. Ne ne ba ta go le ba ta go le tshwara tsa. Hey, mira. You hit this hand. They don't understand. Ga ba itse gore o ira eng. That you are protecting them. Wa ba se release. Amen. And we see that God wanted Adam to name all the animals. He wanted Adam to be involved with him. When you are with your child and you give them certain responsibilities, they do this, they come back to you and say, Dad, look what I have done, I did it. I did it. I did it. Like at home, yeah, our kids sometimes they eat, they leave everything in the stove, yeah, the plates and stuff. And again, again and again, I have to teach them. Don't do that. So this small small one, one, after she finishes, they look. I'm taking my plate. I hear. They feel very proud when they are doing the right thing. Amen. So God wanted Adam to work with him to name the animals. God wants us to be involved with daddy business. He actually enjoys our involvement. When we are working with him to advance his kingdom, it blesses him so much. How are you doing in working with your daddy? Working with daddy is the most beautiful, the most amazing And thing. when you work with him and he's happy, he gives you more ability. He gives you more gifts. He gives you more so that you can work better, efficiently. For many, many years, I have prayed a prayer that I did not understand. But it made sense to me. I have always prayed, Father, I want you to give me laser anointing. Laser anointing. Now, medically, do you know that you can operate somebody's eye, remove the cataracts through laser? No, no blood spilling, no cutting, nothing. Laser is so effective. Laser is what I've heard lately is that they can even operate on you while they are in America. And you are here, they just no blood, nothing. They remove cataracts from your eyes. Then you go. Laser is so effective, so precise. It goes to the problem without causing damage in other areas. Huh? If you have a lamp that is cancerous in your breast uh, and they use laser to destroy it, uh, but there is a laser and there is no cut in you, is that not wonderful? Uh, so I've been praying, God, give me laser anointing. Uh, my work is so much, I want to pop, 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 pop. Uh, Imagine, without sweaty. <laughs> Huh? Now imagine if you can just come. Huh? That's laser. Eh? Fast, laser effective. Huh? So when you are faithful in the How you can hear? You are you are busy working hard sweating. Let me give him the laser. So that he works laser. because his work is much now. I need to work fast. Fast. Yeah, you are just sitting there waiting for laser, doing nothing. God looks at you and says, laser for what? Huh? Laser for what? You are not doing anything. You are just sitting there. Can't tell on the lazy. Now in Genesis chapter 3, we are still looking at uh, uh, the goodness of the Lord. In Genesis chapter 3, the devil does not you know, uh, blatantly reject the truth or, or uh, object to the truth. The devil doesn't come to you and says, ah, there's no God. Ah, God is lying when he says, no, 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 he doesn't do that. He's not that, you know, you guys, you don't know, do you know that the devil is very clever? 
But Jesus is much more clever. The devil has been watching you for a long time. Not just you, your parents, your grandparents. He, you know, he knows what has been happening. He's been he has studied you very well. Amen. Huh. He doesn't just blatantly object to the truth. But he causes Adam and Eve to question. The devil will just make you question God's intention. He doesn't say, ah, God doesn't care about no, no. no. He makes you question. He just throws a question. Hmm? Did God really say? I mean, 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 I now, when somebody says that to you, did you did you really hear me properly? They make you they confuse your mind two minutes. Did God really say? I mean, we real. Yes, yes, yes. He said we should not even touch it. Uh, the devil knew that. Uh, the message didn't come through properly. No, God knows that you will be like Him. Hmm? Now, when the devil does that, he has already confused your mind by asking you a question. Said, now he's telling you something that you don't know. Again, no, he knows. Why? Now, if if understood that God made them in his image let, let us, us make men in our own image and they knew this now because the devil has questions the intentions of god he can come in with new information that will lead you astray that's what happens when you go to false prophets the they will tell you something that you know when i agree six years your father passed away in six years. You grew up without your father. Again. Hey. Something that you know. <laughs> and then after they tell you that now they have won your trust. Again. Then they tell you. Now this is what is going to happen. If you don't do this, this is what is going to happen. Now you believe them. Again. You buy into their stories. And you are led astray. So he doesn't object, you know, he just questions the intentions of God. If they knew that God had already made them in their own image, they would they would have laughed at the devil and said, Ah, we are already in the image of God. What do you mean? But it made them question the intentions of God. Now, after they ate the fruit, they started hiding from God for the first time. And God came to fellowship with them like he normally does. He didn't find them. Not that he didn't know what happened. Adam, Adam, where are you? I'm hiding. He ah, what's the problem? Why are I you am naked. Uh, who told you you are naked? Do, do, do. And Silence. God says, Did you eat of the fruit that I told you not to eat? Now he answers. The woman you gave me. I said, no, not me. 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 me. That's why we started blaming each other. I I deal with a lot of conflicts. The amount of blame that couples have against each other. Women in France. They would remind five. you, Hore. What very cows did they clean the green and yellow? Green and yellow socks. That day, the shirt was yellow. When you got into the house, you, you did something. I knew from that day that looked 
Everything has never been. Banaba mudimu ta itela wakara batu si amaba si banzia. Ui baza oru. Kantu wa kati zili. Lo mangu katwa la mangu ra mino chuzo kati zili. Hola rumu noha. Muruti. Mosele ora rumu hasa sote. Onza hasa re kanye. All these years. Osanta hale kwa. Mm-mm. Now it's been, it's okay. What are you doing? I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. Mr. Okey that he gave me an ode for you. This one is dangerous. Mr. Okey that he gave me an ode for you. Dangerous. So many years. Mr. Okey that he gave me an ode for you. Mr. Okey that he gave me an ode for you. Mr. Okey that he gave me an ode for you. Mr. Okey that he gave me an ode for you. Mr. Okey that he gave me an ode for you. Mr. Okey that he gave me an ode for you. Mr. Okey that he gave me an ode for you. They remember almost everything. So it's the woman you gave me. Mr. Okey that he gave me an ode. Is the snake? So there are no. Hmm. No, I never eat them. I can't eat the lesson. It's a bad thing. So it's a modulo. If we are like, can I say, look? I can't even hear one. It has shifted. Amen. How about camera? And as they were blaming each other. In the middle of their sin, just as after they had sinned, you get this loving God. We are talking about a good and loving God. Disappointed as they were. Mm -hmm. You know, when they realized that he when he realized that they had sinned, imagine God falling on his knees, crying, and saying, How can you, Adam? How can, you, Adam, how can you do that? How can you agree with the serpent? Crying. And just looking at God crying at humanity. You know, crying for us. How can you? How can you? But in the middle of such great disappointment, God gives a promise. This good God. When you have sinned against him. When you, you know that you have gone out in the middle of your sin right there he gives a promise he says her offspring will crush the head of the serpent yes the serpent may bruise your heel but your offspring will crush his head so in the middle of your sin when you have failed totally God says you are going to emerge victorious one day and we know the seed that he was talking about was Christ who was to crush the head of the serpent. He has done it for us. But there were consequences. There are always consequences of disobedience. And we see the consequences here. That childbearing becomes painful. And the ground becomes cursed at that point. But in the middle of all of that, God dresses them. They had covered themselves with leaves. But God kills an animal for the first time. Because sin requires the death, the shedding of blood. He kills an animal. He makes a nice, nice clothes for them, leather clothes, to cover them because now they felt the shame because of sin. God, when we are crying and we have sinned against him and we have done, he comes and then he covers us with his love, with his, with his hugs. He gives us kisses that we know we do not deserve. He shows us his love in the middle of our sin. He covers us with his love. He dresses us with his love. And he says, you are mine. You are mine. He took care of them. 
And he knew that if he left them in the garden, they were going to eat of the fruit of life. And they will be eternally locked in their sinful state. So in his love and in his protection, he takes them out of the garden of Eden and he puts an angel, a cherubim by the, by the entrance of the garden so that they don't come in. Because he had a plan to rescue them, to bring them back into his garden one day when they are right with him. Our God, in the middle of our sins, He comes to us. Our God is not judgmental like we Christians are. You know, we Christians, yeah, we are very judgmental. When somebody sins, Ooh. we don't even want to talk to you. We, we gossip about you. We start saying, yeah, sorry, man. Sorry, man. I swear, I'm serious. Never been serious. Imagine if Jesus was like that with Peter. Peter. We'd be in trouble. So because of this scene in Genesis chapter 6 verse 5. We see that sin spreads all over the world. Over humanity. The Bible says. People became so wicked. Every inclination of their hearts was only evil. They only 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 evil. Evil. Except Noah and his family. And because God still wanted to bring a Messiah who will save us. He gave them Noah to preach to them. For 100 years or so, they laughed at Noah when he was telling them about the flood. He said, the old man, have you ever seen rain? Rain. They are about. These things will never happen. And then they saw animals going two by two. And they said, hey, the old man. Remember, you know, during that time, things were different from how they are now. So animals go in, they are still laughing at it. Until the day God shut Noah. Do you know that it is God who closed the door I just wonder how big is And when Noah created that door, I mean like, how was it so God God is the one who shut Noah in. Responsible for our salvation. And he started raining. That's when the panic came. came. Until yeah. everyone died except eight people. But, but, Do you know that God can always start afresh? Yes, no problem. When they were singing, and let me finish all of them and start with you. If it wasn't for Moses, we could have started with Moses again. Ah, well. I have no problem. Amen. Because time is in his hands. So in Genesis chapter 7, we see that God is the one shutting Noah in the ark. And then in chapter 8, verse 20, we see that Noah sacrifices. In the midst of the flood, he sacrifices to the Lord. And when he did that, the curse that was on the ground was gone. That curse was taken away by the flood, by the way. Adam was toiling to, for the ground to produce food because of his sin. But after the flood, that curse was taken away from the ground. That is why today the world can produce food that can feed 81 billion people. How many people are there in the world today? Only 7 billion. 31 divided by 7. 7 
Greed is the biggest problem that we have. It's not like that the earth is cursed. That curse was removed by the flood. This world can produce more than enough food. But it's sin. Greed. Uh, selfishness. The allocation of property. You have somebody with no plot and another one with 300 plots. Greed. Greed. Amen. First Peter chapter 3 verse 19. First Peter 3 19. When Christ died, <laughs> he died once and for all. And he went down <laughs> to preach to those who were held captive. Do you know that Jesus Christ went to preach to the dead? Always, people are always asking, what about those who died before Christ? Because he's the only way. The only way. Oh, we are going to meet many of them who accepted him. God is a God of justice. There is no unfairness to him. Amen. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 8. Just uh, project that. We need to know that God's time is much different than our time. And he doesn't want any of us to perish. Second Peter chapter three verse eight. Second Peter three eight. First Peter three nineteen is the one that talks about him going down to those who were held in prison. Three nineteen. Okay. Second Peter three eight. It says, "Dear friends, don't let this one thing escape you." With the Lord, one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. Verse twelve. 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 For all of the people that have lived in the history. Psalms 103 from verse 1. Psalms 103. It says, My soul praise the Lord and all that is within me. Praise his holy name. Your soul must praise him. Because his compassion is on those who love him. God has been making an effort to reach us from the beginning. You want to know how God feels about our disobedience and our us ignoring him? him? Have you ever thought about God's feelings? He has feelings Jeremiah 2 verse 5. Jeremiah 2 verse 5. It's very painful if you get to know how God feels. About what we do to him. He says. Here's what the Lord says. What fault did your fathers find in me? that they went so far from me followed worthless idols and became worthless themselves when you follow worthless idols you become worthless because your worth is measured by what you find with what you worship defines what we you find worthy of being worshipped. If your God is a tree, what does it say about you? 
Because your God is a higher being. So if it's a tree, then we're now in. And God feels this way. He says, what did your father's what fault? What did you Ask this child what I have done. Han togela botu my teo as I told me kidirile molato wa miki what have I done This is how God feels Mimi you could hala yana Verse 6 What fire fault did they find in me that they follow this worthless idols Verse 6 Verse 6 They stopped asking. Where is the Lord who brought us from the land of Egypt? Who led us through the wilderness? Through a land of desert and rivers. Through a land of drought and darkness. A land no one traveled through. And where no one lived. They stopped asking. When people stop asking about their God, but they have forgotten their God. You want to know how God feels? Hosea, a prophet of God, once asked God to show him how he felt. You can go to the book of Hosea, chapter 11, verse 1. He wanted God to show him really how he felt. And you know what God told him? He told him to go and marry a prostitute. Imagine. This is real. It was not some uh, parable. parable. Hosea had to go and marry a prostitute, a woman who gives herself to many men. Bring her in. Take care of her, love her, give her everything she wanted. But her prostitution will made her very unstable. In the night when Hosea is sleeping, she will go to other lovers. And she will go and stay there. And Hosea will follow her up in the houses of those men who did not care about her, who just wanted to use her. And Hosea will bring her back into the family. Love her, show her love, compassion, forgive her. And then she will go again. What kind of love is this? I know when I know that you really manage, brethren. But I didn't know about it. You don't know what are you doing with such kind of a person? A man of God married a prostitute. And God told her, God told him to divorce her. So that she can go and feel how it feels like to have love taken away from you. So her. that they, you know, during divorce, the, the, the privileges are cut off. God wanted her to feel how it feels like to have love and be cut off from that. God did that to the Israelites. He God cut them off. There was times of silence when they were in exile and they were serving their gods and they remembered, oh, see, where we read, he says they are no longer asking about the God who delivered them from Egypt. And they will remember there was a time where we were a people, where we were loved, where we had dignity. The privileges are cut. There are times where God cuts off certain privileges so that we can remember ourselves. You remember in the book of Luke chapter 15, the prodigal son who had disobeyed and went away and he, he blundered, he took everything that he used, everything that he had and privileges were cut from him. He was, he was staying with pigs. It was in that moment of cut privileges, privileges that he remembered where he came from. He said, my, the servants in my father's house, they eat better than this. I would rather go and be a servant. 
คนแล้วก็เรายา so when God cuts privileges from you don't think it's because it's cruel you want to remember what you have lost God wants a relationship with us He is Emmanuel He is God with us are you willing to come to Emmanuel Matthew chapter 1 verse 23 Matthew 1 23 Are you willing? To come? Are you willing to come and experience this love? Or have you let the idols, the, the worship of mammon, money, cars, houses, the pride of life, the extravagance of life, has it become your God? Is it more important than God? Matthew 1 23. See, the virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son. And they will name him Emmanuel. God with us. God wants to be with you. He wants his son to live inside of you. He wants to always be with you. He wants to be there to advise to direct you and ultimately at the end in revelation 21 verse 1 a new heaven and a new earth is prepared where god wants to be with you forever wanting to lead you into an abundant life his desire is not to withhold any good thing from you no yeah. He wants to give you every good thing. That's who he is. He wants you. The Bible says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. And they see existed. No he wants. His children to be gathered to him. He has prepared mansions for his children. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. Prepared like a bride adorned for her husband. God has prepared a new home for all of his children. He wants them there. Then I heard a loud voice from the throne. Luke, God's dwelling is with men. And he will live with them. They will be his people. And God himself will be with them. And will be their God. Emmanuel. God with us. He wants us. He wants to give us himself. Are we willing? to open up to him. Let us pray. Father, we just want to thank you. You are a good God. You are a loving God. Your grace is sufficient. Your mercy is abundant. When you revealed yourself to Moses, you said, the Lord, the Lord, gracious and compassionate God, Slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. What an amazing God you are. Thank you, our Father, that you want to be with us. Oh, we have disappointed you. We have ran away from you. We have gone and played with idols. We have given ourselves to idols that only want to destroy us. But you have continued to pursue us. Even when we were out there prostituting uh, with other men. You came after us as a faithful husband who loves unconditionally. You followed us and you brought us back. Father, may this love become deep. May this love become important to us. May we see this love for what it is, O oh God. And may you, Jehovah, remain the center of our lives. Father, we pray, Heavenly Father, that the things that continue to uh, distract us, to take us out of focus, that they will cease, that they will end. And no more, O oh God, will those things be important to us. May our desire be for you and no one else. May we wake up in the middle of the night thinking about you 
and no one else. May we pursue you and no one else, O oh God. For if we seek first the kingdom, all of these other things that we are concerned about will be added unto us. We thank you. We bless your name in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. May the Lord bless you.